Hey guys, this is Kevin Grace reporting to you from Hollywood, California at Hollywood Forever Cemetery. Behind me is one of the most famous screen, silent screen actors that ever lived. If I say the name, you'll know who I'm talking about. Valentino. Rudolph Valentino is buried right here. So he's in this crypt. And here he is, Rudolph. Valentino lay in state at Campbell's funeral parlor. A great many of them really had had a lot of feeling and affection for Valentino. So it was a crowd filled with emotion and with hysterical emotion that you weren't at all sure what they might do. Seven days later, the funeral. Ben Lyon took charge. I received word one day at the Ambassador Hotel in New York from the florist in the lobby that they had had a phone order from Miss Pulver Negri to place a blanket of white roses across the top of the casket six feet by four, and in the center, in one foot letters in red roses, P-O-L-A, Polar. Well, let's make it look like an opening night for her, a premiere or something. I said, under no circumstances will, that, will those flowers be placed on that casket. And they weren't, and of course she was furious and put up a terrific fight and I said they're not going on and uh, the whole thing turned out to be if you remember that she fainted and fell down and had to be carried it was a, it was a premiere for Paul Negri. Among the Paul bearers were Adolf Zuko, Marcus Lowe, Rex Ingram, Douglas Fairbanks and Joseph Skink. Natasha Rambova did not appear. There was to be a second funeral in Hollywood. Alberto Valentino joined the train for the five-day journey. We went across country and it was amazing. Uh, you probably, you can't believe me, but I was awake early in the morning because it was just dawn. And the train stopped. And I was informed that was a uh, a group of uh, people which had come with guitar, mandolin, the great majority were Italian living here in this country. And they, they just asked me permission if they could sing and play some of the Italian song for the memory of Rudolf. It was very touching. It was the biggest funeral Hollywood had ever seen. At the Church of the Good Shepherd in Beverly Hills, stars paid their last respects. Skank collected two one million dollar insurances on his life. They didn't even buy him a grave. He's living, he's living, he, he's resting in a, in a, in a in the box that belonged to June Mattis. See, so she had, she had free, whatever they call those drawers where they put them in the wall for herself, for her mother, and she had bought one for her husband at the time, Balboni. And uh, so when Rudy died, she says, if you have no grave for Rudy, you can use 
was a spot of Balboni's and he's still there. Valentino was 31 years old. His death gave him a status he had never sought in his life. He had become immortal. screen lover. Consider, for a moment, the images that are conjured, the feelings that are brought to the surface. Think about the notion of the definitive Latin lover. Now, think about Rudolph Valentino. He has been gone for 75 years, yet his impact, his importance, and his legacy are as strong and vibrant as in his day. We remember him not only for his great contributions to film, but for the joy, the rapture, the beauty of the man. And we will forever. He was born Rodolfo Alfonso Raffaello Pierre Filibert Guglielmi di Valentina d'Antanguola. His parents, Giovanni and Beatrice Guglielmi, welcomed him on May 6, 1895, in the little town of Castellaneta in Italy. He had an older brother, Alberto, and a younger sister, Maria. He attended military school and completed this education at age 15. On December 23, 1913, after a two-week journey, 18-year-old Rudy arrived in New York in search of a better life. Penniless and needing work, he practiced his English and took jobs wherever and whenever he could. After a while, he got a job as a dancer. This eventually led to work in vaudeville and frequent stints as a dance instructor. In 1917, he made his film debut as a dancer in the film Alimony. Rudy's beginning in motion pictures was slow at best featuring several extra appearances and minor roles as, of all things, the villainous heavy. He made the best of the parts he had, however, and with each performance, his strength as an actor grew. His strong showing in a 1920 film called The Eyes of Youth caught the eye of a scenario writer with Metro. June Mathis. This led to the casting of Rudy in the 1921 classic, The Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. With the release of this film, the true legend of Valentino was born. The films that followed his initial brush with fame solidified the superstardom that carried him through the rest of his life. Romance, intensity, passion. The images of the career of Rudolph Valentino conjure our deepest emotions and move us still.
the brightest star in the sky, with light that illuminates all it touches, cannot shine indefinitely. At the tender age of 31, Rudolf Valentino passed from this life at 10 minutes past noon on August 23, 1926, after ulcer surgery caused an infection, resulting in fatal endocarditis and septicemia. Tributes poured in from around the globe. Funeral services were held on both coasts and great homage was paid, not only to the career that had so tragically been cut short, but to the man whose very being meant so much to so many. To this day, the thirst for Valentino remains unquenchable. The definition of Latin lover is embodied in Valentino. The youthful vigor of his images and the promise of what might have been solidify his legacy and secure his rightful place in history. He will always remain young he will never grow old. And as long as there are friends who can dream, lovers who can love, and romantics who can long for an ideal, there will be Rudolph Valentino forever.